whole different kind of, of uh, Hi, good evening. This is Sarah Chu. The program is Basket Starfish, our language core. Thank you for tuning in. Tonight is the 61st episode. I'm going to uh, continue on talking about uh, the origin of a lot of the religious uh, words, like uh, why the Taoism in Chinese we say Dou, okay, or Dao uh, is really related to the Torah, and also uh, why the uh, Hebrew uh, direct, which means a way, is the same as the Ordos in Greek, and it's also a, like a way, and also the Tariq in uh, Muslim, in, in Islam, also means the way. Why is it that all the ancient sins, uh, the religions, all have the idea and the concept of a road that we have to follow? Sometimes it is meandering and sometimes it's like a straight road, but I will show you all the early writing that already shows all this connection, okay? I'm going to begin now. Uh, if I'm going too fast, please type the program name again, uh, Basket Star our language core and you can uh, we watch it again slowly okay and I will start from the beginning now of the slides and once again this is uh, what I propose this is the shape of basket starfish uh, the best thing is actually you can imagine it in a 360 degrees the core is actually a rounded core and all those branches actually come out in 360 degrees and none of us are individual tree family and then because if we believe in that uh, if we believe that every uh, tree family comes at a different time then we usher in this human hierarchy and uh, all, all the last 150 years of uh, linguistic researches only keep telling you that uh, the importance of the Indo-European languages but I will show you that I incorporate Chinese and also ancient Egyptian hieroglyph writing and you will see all the similarity you know already there you know since the Sumerian pictograph okay so I think uh, this needed to be changed so uh, so that we can put everybody on the same equal ground so we can understand the world in a more fair way okay so once again I will uh, continue this uh, again the word Tao or Torah uh, which means uh, actually a law which give you the direction okay of in life religiously okay the Tao or, or in is an English transcription in Chinese we will say Tao or Dou okay and uh, once again this is the Sumerian writing you will see that a uh, food representing the goal um, is somehow you know have the do sound and then uh, the the foot you know with another symbol right there you will see it later is also a foot with a bull head right there it's, it has the sound of do means path you will see that very early on you know they have already a very uh, interesting relationship between this sound and um, of course you know for a nomadic uh, period during the Bronze Age when everybody was herding animals around and this connection had already been made and um, as I said this is the Chinese writing you will see later that the Sumerian pictogram actually looks exactly the same which later become this cuneiform sign and it's actually is like the foot has some kind of thinking ability to lead you into uh, the, the walking way and then um, this is a Chinese uh, way of expressing the uh, the head which is we pronounce it as Tao once again this research based on Cantonese sound most of the time but uh, once in a while I will also bring in Mandarin sound, uh, which has a lot more mutation than the ancient uh, Cantonese sound. So uh, because the linguist has been using Mandarin as a base, so they do not find the connection. So I hope um, my research can convince you that, you know, the language really did come from a single core. Okay, once again. We use the animal head, you know, to represent the head, you know, the Tao, the sound, okay, the leader. And you will see that the two here is means the priest. Uh, and also take note right here. You see the little cross right there. It's already existed there. For them, it means the priest. Of course, you know, in a religious society, the two is actually the leader again. And then the same sound, they, they draw it separately. That must be they, uh, they, they try to uh, mean the secular leader. So bo both the priest or the leader both share this leader sang as two, the same as the Chinese 
tau or, or, or tau, okay? And then um, you will see later the writing goes on. Uh, these two parts is actually uh, the Chinese way of writing the street, which you will, or I will also compare with ancient Sumerian. But you will see that uh, you will see uh, the the head right there with a very uh, hand showing the power of leading is actually uh, for us is the the Tao or Tao Sang. This is the changing you know sign. Okay, they carry the Tao or Tao Sang, and it actually means you know the way, the road, the path, or actually the person itself, the leader. Okay, and of course you know the word itself become uh, the what you know as Taoism, is an ancient philosophy, and then uh, the other way of saying the road is also Tao. Okay, or Tao or Tao. Okay, so you will see that you know the bull head is also right there. As I say again and again, sometimes we understand the bull head as the foot also. So, so the foot is means the the head the, the the head actually means the foot is also vice versa interchangeable okay so I compare this uh, Greek word odos you know this is the word Jesus Christ keep using to tell people that uh, you know he's the way that people have to travel towards you know the heavenly Father okay so or the dromos it actually means the way the road the street okay so um let me introduce you to another part of the the word that makes up the, the Hebrew and also make up the uh, later uh, English words okay this is um, this has two different sounds one is pets of course you can relate it easily you know with the uh, pedestrian the pet side which means has has a lot to do with the food but the other sound you know according to the Egyptologist this is also has the sound of rut okay so um, if you look at Hebrew there's a word root it actually means to wander to move around so it's closely related to with the foot again and of course in French this root is actually means the root or the road but if you can see the uh, consonants itself from this from the from this to that they are very very consistent for, uh, for from ancient time to now it still means the way that we are walking in okay either you use the foot to represent it or you use it to means the root or the road so you can see that uh, this is the interesting part of languages because it's uh, all the time it's fluxing especially between different cultures gradually uh, develop our own habit of understanding thing but you will see that it's actually still linked together okay so but I go back all the way to Sumerian again. Look at this. The first part is actually this, uh, the D, the, the Tao or the Tao, the D and the T interchangeable. But the second part, actually, you can already link it to this uh, way right here. The Derik in Sumerian actually means the flow, the drift, the go and the glide. For them, it is the, it, it is the river way, not a dry uh, way that you walk on. You have to understand because the Mesopotamian you know the most important thing are the two important rivers the Tigris and the Euphrates so you will understand this is only because of different geographic background but the word actually used are the same whether you are nomad you're wandering around on land or whether you are people who who goes on the boat to wander around they were actually using the same word and as you can see it seems that as early as the Sumerian these were already very compound words okay made up of two parts of the of the uh, of the words to mean one thing okay and then of course they are it is not alone you can easily trace the a way to direct which in Hebrew actually means the way the road and it also of course it used religiously you know when you follow the halak the law it is uh, what they refer to as the way and then the same word you know will be from D to, uh, mutate from D to T sound the tariq if you are Muslim if you believe in Islam this will be the tariq you is the same way for you to believe that it is the road to god okay to allah okay so you will see that this is very consistent and you this even the second part the rick 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 right there it is actually from the foot part okay so you will see that it is very consistent and even in the english words that you know from the tread you can you see the t plus the rd uh, consonants the tread the track the track the tread or uh, the mutation you know because one word breed into another word into another word so in order to express mass concrete uh, meaning we actually uh, 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 one word actually grown into different meaning in 
including this word directive or direction. Uh, direct is actually, uh, you know, has the way all the way you can also follow back to the Sumerian sign. Okay, so uh, I will go to the next slide. And uh, again, uh, I've been talking about the spiritual elevation, but this time, you know, I will show you how the ancient already understand it. You know, you have to achieve it in pairs or you have to have company to do the same. It is uh, also based on the ancient way of pairing up when they go on the road, you know, to, to make sure their own safety. This is the Chinese word lay. As I told you uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, the Chinese word for, for code or the ritual to follow is lai. And when you look up the lai, it points you to this lay. And lay means to tread on, to foot stop, to ascend. And that means the Chinese way of explaining what the law is also a way to follow. Okay. But I want you to pay attention to the writing and, and in, in a minute. Okay. But you will compare this song, Alaya, the Hebrew saying Alaya or the Hindi saying Alaya. They are all uh, going up, you know, to the spiritual arbor. You know, it is a pilgrimage. It is the return to the home, you know, a base. Okay. So, look at this right here this is again this come from the tau the head right there or the leader okay and then as time went by as i said this is the base of the word uh, taoism tau in chinese and it also means the way you will see that that animal is always there the leading animal head and of course you know sometimes you also represent that with an a shape you know that's why in the west you use the a alpha as the leading alphabet in the west but in the east you know we it, it became part of our writing too but we just don't pronounce it as as, as you that directly okay so um, this all uh, come back to a very abstract sign you know the head and the and and, and the foot combined together and of course if you imagine the way we follow up right there it is the way of ascent okay and then in Chinese if you look up this word lay it actually takes you to another lai sang okay so the sang actually follows the the word explained um, to, the word to explain this word become this word and lai actually means to travel in pairs and if you look up this word it really takes you to this word you will see that consistently it means pairing up to travel it means a journey a tr the travel and as you, s you can see that uh, even in, in Hebrew in uh, Islam always the way to God is always uh, as a metaphor is a journey and of course the modern use of lai is in Chinese is in pairs or means something elegant. You have to uh, know, understand, I mean, in, even in the Middle East, in, uh, in the Middle East now, when you travel, you really dressed up because it is a way of being seen. People respect you, people know who you are. So whenever they travel, they actually dress up, not like us now. We put on something, you know, uh, the, uh, as we can, we think we can throw away so we can travel and throw away. It is it's very different in old times you know you dress up when you go out just like when you go to church you dress up okay so um, you I will show you the Sumerian as I say again the do is one foot and you can see the light is also two foot so you will see that these are not coincident they have this idea long long time ago and then of course do's is to the path as I said this is exactly come from this Sumerian pictograph can you see the first further back we go to the most identical the symbols were so you will see that as time went by every culture developed on its own branch so we are just a branch of the whole system okay so the spiritual journey in pair I will exaggerate it a little bit more to make you understand if you understand this road you know as a, a thread that you are following uh, um, a few weeks ago I also show you you know how come the L also shared between the river a road and a rope okay so but then sometimes you can use the H to represent the rope which uh, I show you here this is ancient Egyptian hieroglyph the H sound and this is Chinese high also an a guttural H sound and this is ancient Hebrew the guttural H sound which become later your H writing all this is closely related to a 
thread and a rope, okay? And then uh, the Hebrew word hubble is actually means to wind tightly and a rope, okay? And I will show you. Um, the ancient Egyptian used a tool ply thread. The Chinese use a three ply thread to express themselves. But look at the Chinese writing. We use a three line. We actually have a word hub right there. Hub means a three ply thread and also it means join together. You will see the hubble and hub. Actually the Chinese word, um, the Cantonese word of uh, a rope is actually hub right there. It's precisely the same sound like this. So for us, we use the rope to mean joining together. So let's look at the Hebrew word you know, and then the Hebrew habit of studying together. This is a picture of all the rabbis studying together in groups, okay? So the Hebrew word will be habruta. Okay, you see, this is a compound word again. The router, as you see in the, as you saw in the first slide, is actually the way to go together. The hub it means the rope wind tightly. It means friendship, companionship. But this word is only used specifically to mean a traditional rabbinic approach to Talmudic study in which they group together in groups of two or five to analyze and to debate. So you will see that, you know, even though we change in different culture, we actually use the word in very similar way. And then let's look at the other uh, religion, which also has a very strong tradition of grouping up to study. This um, is the Tibetan, you know, lamas. They also group together in in tools, you know. They debate with each other in their monastery. They 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 study together. And this is Buddhism. The other you understand is 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 um is Jewish uh, religion. And of course, you know the uh the Muslim also have their own system. So you will see that since ancient time, we you we go side by side with understanding how we can achieve this uh, spiritual journey in pairs or in groups okay so again I'll go back to, to today's song okay the Tao the Torah the direct or, or you can understand as the direction or the directive you we have to follow okay so once again I show you a river way and then the, the uh, Sumerian way will be direct direct for them means flow to drift to go to glide of course it depends whether you're going down or going up okay and the spirit spiritual way we always understand that we are going up okay so the Hebrew will be saying direct it's very similar to this direct and then for them is the way the road the path the manner or the habit of doing something of course you know the one is on the river the other goes on the desert okay and then uh, I change it into a, a real road for you the dry road and then you will see the Chinese Dou right there which means the way the road and also means Taoism a religion just road and also the toe which means the way and then you see, can see the bull head there uh, you know the, the the foot following away and then now I concentrate back into the Jewish word. The tour actually means to meander about, to seek, to search. Of course, in the Bible, sometimes it uses to mean spy. But in English, you can actually uh, use the, 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 the thought of tour. It means going around, looking for something, okay? And then depends on how you read it. The writing is the same in Hebrew um, and exactly the same. The Chinese can write one word and we use hard memory to remember the tone. So we do pronounce pronounce things differently. The, 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 um, the Jewish people do the same. The same writing, if they pronounce it as Tor, it means to order the road. That's the line you have to follow. Okay? And then, of course, you know, if you add one alphabet right there, it becomes the Torah. The Torah actually means the manner, the mode, the custom of doing something. If you use the word non-religiously, it's just a custom. Okay? But if you use the word uh, religiously, it means the law, the precept, the instruction and the direction, the guideline you have to follow. So all this actually, every single part means part of the, I mean, it contributes to the full meaning. So one word has so such a full meaning that you have to go very deep to understand it, okay? So of course, you know, all this, no, no, no matter you understand it as the Tao in Chinese uh, and also the Torah in the Jewish world or the Tariq in the Muslim world, it's always the law 
law of social directive. You use it socially or you use it religiously. Okay, of the way. Now, uh, when you use in the Christian way, uh, again, I have shown you, but I, uh, a couple of weeks ago, but, but I didn't have time to finish it. Jesus said that, I mean, in John 14.6 um, uh, said that, uh, the doubting Thomas asked, Lord, uh, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? So Jesus answered that I am the way. And the way he used is in, in Greek would be odos. Once again, the do right there, okay? So let's go back to see how the ancient write this road, okay? And this is the ancient Sumerian writing of the road. It be cuneiform become like this. The Akkadian would be written like this. This is a Chinese writing. And you will see that it's actually in uh, linked together. And then this is a, a symbol that the ancient Egyptian hieroglyph used to mean a, a meeting point, a town. Of course, or when all the four rows meets, you know, it is a town away, okay? And then um, uh, in ancient, uh, I mean, uh, Proto-Greek, in the this, this would be also understood as the heart of this meeting. You can understand as the cardia, and then this is the heart, the center. And, and I will go no further, but I will uh, let you hear the sound. In ancient Sumerian, they, they, they draw a running feet, that, which means which share the same sound cast. But look at Chinese right there. The Chinese has the word gai, which also you can link it to gaie in Spanish. It means the street. But for us, gai is a smaller street. But for us, do is a bigger road when cultures meet, okay? So sometimes we use the two together, gai do. But kado in ancient Latin, this also, of course, linked to Greek, okay? And, but if in Latin kado, kado means actually the north, south, you know, uh, thoroughfare. It's a very big road. Cardo is the main street or in a Roman city, okay? But of course, this Cardo actually means the pivot, the meeting point, the joint. But that's why Jesus Christ will always carry this symbol right there. The crossing right there. And then, of course, the wreath right there is actually, as I told you, the Jewish writing. The, the Ras and the Res is actually means the head. He's the head of the, the joint of the row that brings you over to the other way. So you have to understand this word very, very deeply. It, you, it doesn't have one single meaning. And of course, you know, in English, you become the cardinal point. And even in English, one of the rank it will be the cardinal. The cardinal is also part of the rank to lead you to Jesus. It will be further on, you know, a private to take you to God, okay? So this is a very rich word that you have to understand it through many layers of history, okay? so. Once again, I'll show you this, or those in Greek and Phoenician, this sign will be Tau or, or, or Tau sign, which will be the last alphabet. Look at Chinese. For Chinese, this is the first of the numbering system. And this is the last of our, our ancient uh, metaphysics uh, numbering system. When you look up the dictionary, this word has an explanation of to pass over. It has the sound of to Tau or Tau, okay? It means the last celestial stem which is the numbering system, or to cross over, to pass over. It seems that the Chinese was also explaining the Christianity, okay? And then, of course, you know, this word directly has the sound of Dou or Tao. It means to lead. Let's see how the writing uh, evolved. It goes one direction to mean Dou. It means rule, the law, the limit, a measure, to speak. Of course, you know, when you preach, you know, you also speak to, 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 to spread the words, okay? The road, the street, and also it means Taoism. The other way it goes is actually the person. It becomes the, the, the noun of a person, to lead, to guide, the leader, or to help you finding direction, okay? So let's compare this again. The way, or the Roman say, the cardo, the main thoroughfare in the Roman city. Okay, this is the ancient uh, Sumerian pictograph. This is the Chinese writing. You will see that the Chinese writing uh, uh, of the thoroughfare is exactly the cardo of the Roman city, okay? The north and south directive of the street, okay? And then uh, when we put this bull right there, bull head right there, and bull means a male, doesn't mean uh, just a bull bull. It can be a deer also, okay? When you heard deers. Okay, it has the do sound right there. And then this is the Chinese writing, the first writing, and you will see 
see that why Jesus always had this symbol to represent him because he's the first, okay? And then this is a Chinese writing. For us, it has a direct guai or guai sound. And then this is the last number. And, and and for us to explain this, we have the meaning of the crossover, and it, it is to rolling over. Look at look at the Greek word as hato. As hato means the final, the final moment when when the God, the kingdom of God comes. Okay, that's why you need the Christ right there. And the Christ, the, the this part means head. But why is it visually it need to put a cross right there? Because he is the one to cross you over, okay, to take you across that gap. That's why you look at the sound, the crystal in Greek and the kwai there in Cantonese, you see even the sound is similar. Uh, everything is actually matching if you are willing to look at it similarly. Of course, you keep having in your mind saying that our, we are different then we are different. I have no way to convince you, but you will have to look deep down into everything, okay? That again, the tau sign. And then it means crossing a gap or waterway. And then why is the writing changing? Because the culture changes. The Phoenician used this as the last alphabet. The Greek used this as the last alphabet. Why? Because they believe there's a little gap, you know, the final hour. This is the uh, omega. This is the word they use for the hour. Aura is the Greek word for your word hour. This is the final hour. There's a little gap right there. So that's why Jesus Christ is bridging that little gap right there. The uh, crystal is right there bridging this gap. That's why the ancients actually has the ability to read, read write uh, drawings. Uh, they read very different from you. And that's why the Greek word archos, uh, which is the English word arch, it uh, takes this, the A lips, the R it means the, the, the round or the head right there. The X is also there. It has all three components. For those who can read pictures, they can read it easily. But you look at the pagan world. The pagan world also have a person, Haron. He's the one who take people across this the river of death. Um, I guess I have to stop right here. Um, thank you for watching. Please uh, watch it again.